They say history repeats, but on the battlefield it just ricochets. From the dense jungles of Vietnam to the dusty chaos of modern urban warfare, soldiers have argued over the same question, which round truly dominates a fight? The lightweight 556 by 45 NATO or the old school punch of 762 by 51 NATO? I've carried both, I've fired both in places where missing wasn't an option, and today we're unpacking the myths, the science, and the street level realities behind each cartridge. Stick around because the debate isn't as simple as a meme, and the truth might surprise you. Chapter 1 – Ballistic Numbers, Specs, and Hard Facts Let's start with the raw data. The 556 NATO fires a .224 inch bullet between 55 and 75 grains, typically screaming past 2700 feet per second. That insane velocity gives it a laser flat trajectory and helps it fragment or tumble on impact, creating wounds larger than its size suggests. Meanwhile, the 762 NATO launches a .308 caliber bullet weighing 147 to 175 grains at around 2600 to 2800 feet feet per second. It's heavier, slower, but carries far more momentum. At 500 yards, a standard 762M80 round still hits with over 1,700 foot-pounds of energy, while a 556 drops closer to 950. But physics always demands a trade. The bigger bullet means more recoil, roughly double that of a 556. A hundred rounds of 762 weigh about 5.3 pounds versus 2.5 pounds for 556. The extra mass adds up when you're hauling six or seven magazines. Still, 762's heavier slug stays supersonic past 800 yards and punches through barriers better. The 556 starts dipping subsonic around 700. So on paper, 762 hits harder and reaches farther, but you pay for that reach and recoil and weight. Then there's twist rate and bullet design. The 556's 62 grain M855 works best in a 1 in 7 twist barrel, while older 55 grain M193 prefers slower twists like 1 in 12. Heavy match loads like the 77 grain MK262 love high twist rates and fragment violently, extending wounding range. 762 bullets are less finicky, a 175 grain M118 works great in a 1 in 11 twist and holds energy better over distance. Ballistics, at its heart, is a dance between mass, speed, and spin, and both cartridges can be tuned for their mission. Chapter 2 – Combat Realities – Tales from Downrange Numbers look clean in a chart, but war doesn't follow charts. Ask any veteran who's humped a rifle through a real fight and you'll hear a dozen different opinions all shaped by where they were and what they faced. In close quarters combat, the 556 often shines. Low recoil lets soldiers stay on target for fast follow-up shots and lighter magazines mean more rounds in the fight. You can maneuver, lay down suppressive fire and stay mobile. But when engagements stretch past 300 meters, across fields, rooftops or open desert, the 556 starts showing its limits. Reports from Iraq and Afghanistan repeatedly noted situations where lighter rounds didn't immediately stop an opponent, especially through cover or at extended range. Many soldiers recall hitting targets multiple times with 556 before seeing an effect, while others swear by the same cartridge for its controllability and hit probability. It's not contradiction, it's context. A round that performs brilliantly at 100 yards might act very differently at 600. The 762, meanwhile, has a reputation for authority. One hit from that heavier bullet often ends the discussion, especially through barriers or body armor. Many marksmen and machine gun teams still rely on it for its consistency and confidence factor. If you connect, it counts. Still, not every fight favors brute force. In fast-moving, close-range engagements, 762's recoil can slow you down and the reduced ammo load can leave you dry sooner than expected. As one veteran put it, I'd rather have more chances to shoot than fewer chances that hit harder. Both camps have a point. Real combat isn't a shooting range. It's movement, chaos, adrenaline, and fatigue. The cartridge that wins depends heavily on what you need it to do. Quick pause if you're enjoying the video, tap that like button and hit subscribe. It really helps us reach more great folks like you. All right, back to it. Chapter 3 – Logistics and Loadouts – The Weight Game Bullets are like currency in a firefight. The more you have, the longer you can stay in business. Back in Vietnam, American troops learned fast that lugging heavy M14 rifles and 762 ammo through jungle terrain was punishing. When the M16 and 556 arrived, it cut weapon weight by roughly two pounds and doubled how much ammunition a soldier could carry. That shift changed tactics overnight. With 556, squads could sustain fire longer and carry more loads, a massive advantage when visibility was low and enemy positions were uncertain. The average infantryman could carry 210 rounds comfortably. With 762, that same weight might only cover half the ammo count. Modern patrols face the same math. Every ounce adds up. 
Armor plates, radios, batteries, and water all compete for space on the loadout. A typical infantryman today carries 60 to 90 pounds of gear before even adding extra magazines. Cutting ammunition weight by half means more endurance and more mobility. But that doesn't mean weight trumps power in every scenario when a mission calls for deliberate, longer-range engagements, overwatch, perimeter defense, or convoy protection, troops often bring rifles chambered in 762 to extend reach and penetration. The key takeaway? 556 dominates when mobility and volume of fire matter. 762 excels when precision and power matter. The art is knowing when trade-off fits your fight. Chapter 4 – Barrier Penetration and Special Roles Now let's talk about what's hitting behind cover. The 762 NATO is known for its ability to punch through intermediate barriers, walls, doors, trees, even light vehicles. Its heavier bullet maintains energy after impact, which is why designated marksmen and machine gun crews still rely on it. It's the round that shrugs off obstacles. But 556 isn't the pushover people think it is. The M855 green tip projectile with its steel penetrator can slice through 6 millimeters of hardened plate. The newer M855A1 performs even better, penetrating light cover in certain body armor plates more effectively effectively than older 762 ball rounds at range. Still, 762's greater mass gives it superior penetration against thicker materials, concrete, trees, or brick walls. In tests, it consistently outperforms 556 in hardcover scenarios. This balance between overpenetration and stopping power is tricky. In urban combat, too much penetration can be dangerous. Bullets passing through walls risk hitting civilians or friendly forces. The 556's tendency to fragment or lose energy after impact can actually be a safety feature in those environments. Environments. For long range and special roles, 762 still rules. You'll find it in rifles like the SR-25, M110, and FN SCAR H. Weapons built for precision, not volume. These rifles fill the gap between standard carbines and sniper rifles, offering power without going full magnum. Meanwhile, engineers have tried bridging the gap with mid-caliber rounds like the 6.5 Creedmoor, 6.8 SPC, and the U.S. Army's new 6.8x51 NGSW. Early results show they blend 556's controllability with much of 762's reach, but adoption takes time and logistics are complex. For now, the world's two NATO classics still define the battlefield spectrum, light and fast versus heavy and hard. Hitting. Chapter 5 The Human Element All the numbers in the world can't replace what happens when human adrenaline meets physics. In a firefight, stress changes everything. Recoil that felt manageable on the range suddenly feels like a sledgehammer. The weight of the rifle that seemed fine in training becomes a burden after 10 kilometers in full gear. That's when 556's low recoil and lighter loads start showing real world advantages. Fast follow up shots, minimal muzzle rise, and lower fatigue all mean you can stay accurate under pressure. That accuracy, not just energy, often determines who walks away. But Confidence matters too. The psychological effect of knowing your rifle fires a heavier, fight-ending round shouldn't be dismissed. Marksmen and support gunners who rely on 762 often describe it as a peace of mind in your hands. Neither cartridge guarantees survival, but each affects how a shooter fights. 556 favors fluid movement and sustained engagement. 762 rewards deliberate marksmanship and precision under pressure. The best round is the one that fits the shooter, the mission, and the terrain. Chapter 6 Verdict Which One Actually Wins? After decades of warfare, tests, and and arguments in every barracks across the world, what's the real answer? For General Infantry, 556 NATO wins. It's lighter, easier to control, and lets soldiers carry almost twice as many rounds. In fights under 300 yards, where most engagements occur, modern 556 ammunition like MK262 or M855A1 is plenty lethal. Its flat trajectory makes aiming simpler, recoil is gentle, and the logistics are unbeatable. But for range and penetration, 762 NATO takes the crown. It stays lethal beyond 600 yards, punches through barriers, and keeps its energy when the fight stretches out. In defensive positions or precision roles, that extra mass can mean the difference between cover and concealment. Ultimately, there's no magic bullet. Every cartridge is a compromise between weight, power, and practicality. A soldier with good training, sound judgment, and solid shot placement will outperform anyone relying on caliber alone. I've learned that firsthand when switching from a 556 carbine to a 762 rifle during deployment. The difference was day and night. The carbine was agile and fast, the battle rifle slower but unshakably powerful. Each had its moment to shine. The mission dictated the winner, not the ammo box. So maybe that's the real answer. The round that wins is the one that matches your fight, your rifle, and your skill. If you've made it this far, you're either a caliber nerd or just love a good gun story. Maybe both. Let me know in the comments. Have you had real-world experience with either 556 or 762? Which one earned your trust? Every story adds a piece to the bigger picture. And together, we learn what really works when it matters. 
Don't forget to subscribe to Guns You Can't Live Without for more deep dives, ballistic breakdowns, and real-world perspectives from the field. Tap the bell so you don't miss our next episode, and share this with that one friend who swears this caliber reigns supreme. Until next time, keep your powder dry and your shots on target.